For me, gun dogs was uh, day one. So I grew up, uh, my dad was a bird dog man. He had bird dogs all growing up. Uh, you know, my dad's told me stories. We used to live in upstate New York for a couple of years that, you know, when I was just a baby, he would throw me in a backpack and, and we'd go out and grouse something. So, I mean, it's, gun dogs have been in my life, you know, ever since day one. We've had uh, English setters, English pointers, Irish setters, spaniels, you name it growing up. It, it was all the bird dogs. So th that's where the love came from, uh, was really from my dad. So my first experience with a waterfowl dog, I was a little bit older. Um, we, we didn't do a lot of duck hunting growing up. One, we just couldn't afford it. Uh, I come from a large family of eight kids and, you know, having decoys and all the necessities you need to go on a duck hunt just weren't possible. So. I was introduced to my first duck hunt when I was 18 years old. Um, a friend of mine, his dad invited us out. And that was on an Illinois River slough and I can remember going out, he had a chocolate dog and she wasn't trained to a high level as I, if I think back now, but to see her go out and work those ducks in that slough and be able to handle left, right and back a little bit and bring them back to the boat, I thought was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. You see how you're holding your arms real tight like this when you're walking him? When you're doing that, what you're doing is you're communicating right down that lead to him that you're either a little bit nervous or you're a little bit unsure, okay? So what we wanna do is be relaxed, okay? That's telling him, that's communicating to him that everything's fine, he's doing the right job, okay? So I just want you to watch the difference. Heel. See how I'm just relaxed? And that's communicating to him that he's doing the right job Everything's fine. Good lad. Heel. Okay, so I want you to try it that way. Okay, not so, not so stiff. Does that make sense to you? Okay, off you go. Whistle in your mouth. There you go. That was the right time to correct him, but we don't want to pull back. What happens is when you pull back, then that makes them want to lean into the lead, right? So we want to correct him to the side. So if he does it again, what I want you to do is just snap your lead to the side like that, okay? Good. Heel. You see that, Kate? He looked the other way, so I just bumped him to the side like that, and that was his correction. And I told him heel when I did it. Very good, Henry, very good. There's a couple things I look for to see, is my dog really listening to me? Is he really understanding what I'm asking him to do? Okay, and there's, there's some things you can look at with your dog. The biggest one is tail position. Right. Like when you're healing, their tail should be here or a little bit down here. If it's up here like this, Kate, what's your dog telling you? Not listening at all. Not li so your dog will tell you a lot about what's going on. And if it's there or down here and he's in the right heel position, you've already, you're together, okay? And then you just wanna maintain that. The other thing is their eyesight. If they're over here looking around, their tail may even be down, but if their focus and attention's over here, you don't have them. You want them checking you every so often, like this, okay? And if you've got those two pieces going, your dog's, he's on the same page with you. So he looked pretty good this morning already with both of you guys, only his attention's just a little bit off, but my guess is within the next 15 minutes, he's going to be, he's going to, down. He's going to be hooked up with, with all of us. So that's good. So with dad and the bird dogs, you know, growing up, we all we always had jobs. So as soon as I could walk, we were feeding dogs, watering dogs, helping to clean out kennels, all those kinds of things. So, you know, I've always had a job to do with them, but with the Labradors, it was coming out of that duck hunt on the Illinois River that day. I told myself, I'm gonna have a Labrador one of these days and I'm gonna train it. And, and it took me a while. I had to study for two, three years until I got out of school, but I read every book, magazine I could get my hands on on just how to train a Labrador. And uh, that was the first thing I did as soon as I could buy one.
So in that time when I was doing all that research, I, I was at least smart enough then, and maybe this was just coming up with bird dogs with my dad and understanding genetics and, and bloodlines and those kinds of things. But the more I researched the Labrador, I stumbled across these UK genetics and these UK trainers. And the more I read about it, the more I learned, it was pretty apparent to me that this is the style of Labrador that's gonna fit me the best. And I talk about this a lot with my clients and, and friends is, Find a dog that fits you, your personality, your style of hunting, what you like to do, and then go find a dog that can do the job. And for me, the UK genetics fit me the best in my style of hunting and my style of working a dog. So part of Henry's training, just to get him ready for what his life's gonna be, which is a, a very public life, is to just get him used to being out in public and able to handle a lot of activity around. So today we're just in a local farm and ranch store that's nearby our house that allows pets. And we're basically just gonna set him up and let people come by. If they wanna visit and, and meet him, they can do that. But the thing we're working on here is just his steadiness. So the key here is just keep him up on the dog stand, keep him quiet, keep him calm while all these people come by and want to and want to meet him. Thank you. Thank you. Sit down. Where's your hand? Walk on back. Keep coming till I stop you. I you did. And then what happened, right? So this time I want you to be a little bit more boss-like, right? You can be a boss. Up, sit, back off, come back with confidence, okay? Stop when I tell you to stop and then just hold him there until I tell you to call him up. Hand. Just keep walking backwards. I'll tell you when to stop. Right there. Much better. Okay. So with him, you got to be boss like, right? Because if you're not, then he's going to take it as an excuse to do all this around your feet and want to jump up on you and all that. Okay. okay. All right. Good job. We're going to try it again later. Okay. Let's, have, let's give dad a try. This is what I do if I've got one that's doing a flyby, okay? We'll just change it up. What we're gonna do is just move the environment where we block him. So you're gonna be standing against that wall gotcha. when you call him up, gotcha. okay? Sure. That way he's got, he can't get past you. Gotcha. And then you've got him right there. So let's just try and try recalling him back that way. There you go. If your expectations with your dog are is that they get to a high level and maintain that uh, over the course of your dog's career. I always tell my clients and my friends, be boss-like, quote unquote, be boss-like. What I mean by that is have good posture, stand up, be in charge so that your dog understands that you're making the decisions and the dog needs to work with you, not the other way around. If you have bad body language and you're communicating to your dog that they can just do whatever they want, you've got no chance in your training and definitely no chance out in the field. The dog's just going to do their own thing. So for me, coming out of that, that first duck hunt and knowing that I was going to have a Labrador to now, you know, we're talking over 20 years. And 
the passion and the love for doing this has not gotten any less. In fact, it's gotten even bigger the more I get into this. Through the years and as I've gotten better as a trainer and a handler and the, and the quality of dogs that I've gotten have, have come along and improved, you know, what I've seen is, is folks that I hunt with or have seen us out working want to know how we're doing it and those kinds of things. And that has kind of led up to really Brookstone evolving into more of a full service kind of kennel where we're breeding our own lines now. We're offering puppies, we're offering training, uh, trained dogs. We do a lot of coaching. For me, it, it really is giving back what I've learned. My mentors have been fantastic to me. Guys like Vic Barlow, Dave Latham, all the major handlers over in the UK that I follow, there's lots that you can learn from them and they've been very free with their information. And what I wanna do for folks that really wanna learn, really wanna figure out how to do this and do it the right way is to help them as much as I can. And for me, that's a big part of this business. I get more joy out of seeing somebody get it with their dog and do it the right way and understand and see that enjoyment and that teamwork come out, it's a fantastic thing. I've learned a lot of obedience, um, how to control him when he's not listening, how to call him, how to use the whistle, to recall, to train him. I thought it would only take like a couple months, but it's going to take three years. It's crazy.